Hey everybody, welcome to Ron Line Report. This man needs no introduction. This young man is the leader of Walker Nation, the New York Pro Champion, Nick Walker. What's up, Nick? What's up, man? Thank you for having me on. Yeah. So, uh, geez, what was uh, as we're speaking? It's been like two and a half weeks since you won that, I think. No, wow, it's been like three now. God, time flies, doesn't it? Yeah, you're right. I think it has been that long. So, uh, man, I, we did a little interview after the show, of course, but I was, I was rushing. I was trying to get out. You were trying to get out. You're part of history now. That New York Pro used to be Knight of Champions. So, the the list of people that have won that before you are guys like Ronnie Coleman, Jake Cutler, Phil Heath, Flex Wheeler, Kevin Levroni, Dexter Jackson. So, my first question is, what was it like to become part of bodybuilding history to win? The New York Pro. I mean, honestly, that still hasn't even like sunk in yet. Like, you know, my, it hasn't really registered. Like, that's that's history. But I mean, the more I hear it, the more amazing it sounds. You know. Yeah, it, it really happened. I was there. I saw it. And, uh, <laughs> uh, I I I have to address this because if I don't, people are going to say you idiot. Why didn't you ask him? For like two three months, we kept getting this buildup of blessing versus Nick at the New York Pro. And we were all hoping for this big battle. We thought, you know, a lot of people I'm sure thought, I didn't, I didn't necessarily think that you guys would be like the last men standing or anything like that. But I think a lot of people had that scenario in their minds that you two, would, the new younger guys, the guys in the 20 somethings, rookies would be battling out. And it just never happened, unfortunately, because, you know, blessing, blessings prep didn't go as planned. Were, yeah. you in, were you in any way kind of disappointed? Were you hoping that that was going to, that was going to pan out the way it was built up to be? No, I knew it wasn't going to. Okay. Yeah. Not to sound arrogant, but there's there was too many good people, and I'm just I'm way above Blessing's level. Yeah, and I mean that's. But me and Blessing did talk backstage, and Blessing is an awesome guy. Yeah. I actually like Blessing a lot. I think he's really cool. Um, I think he has a very very great structure to him, yeah. and I think if he took like a full year, possibly two, and really just worked as you know worked hard he he's he will be very dangerous in the future for sure yeah and i mean you know you made you made i know it was only a few pounds difference between chicago pro last fall and this this show but you know it seemed like more of a difference because you know they talk we talk about muscle maturity as something that takes years and years and years like you got to be i don't know like 40 50 years old before you really have it right but yeah i saw a big improvement in in the details, in the separation, things like that, in a span of, what was that, six, not even six, was it about six months, seven months? Yeah, just about. So talk to me about muscle maturity, and is that is that something that necessarily takes many years, or what else goes into it? Can you accelerate that by training a certain way, by eat, by staying leaner? Um, I think, you know, the way you train, you know, staying leaner does play a role, because, I, I mean, I got up to about 288 that, that off season. Wow. But I was the leanest, you know, I've ever been. Um, and I, you know, really didn't hold any water that much. Um, the way I train, you know, I train very uh, low volume. The, I do very slow negative reps. Um, and I, I, I also up the reps. I don't do nothing really low. Hmm. I stay within 10 to 15 range, sometimes like eight. And I also think the more reps you kind of do, um, the better muscle maturity will speed up. Hmm. Um, so I think that even played a role. Yeah. You know, your, your training, I know people like Jose and myself, we've talked about this before, but I have to commend you again because so many guys who are, you know, at your level, they sling these weights around with the, the most horrific form. And, you know, we can't really criticize them because they say, well, obviously it works for him. Look at him, look how huge he is. But, you know, you could do, I'm sure you could do that if you wanted to, and you could probably even use heavier weights, but, we see you on your Instagram, on your YouTube, uh, and on the raw YouTube, raw nutrition. Very, very good control with very, very heavy weights. It's it's such a rare thing to see. Uh, you know, is is that how you've always trained, or is that something that Matt got you more into the stricter form when you started? Oh, Matt, Matt definitely got me into that. I mean, I remember when I was like 21, 22, I was barbell rolling like four ninety five, but I, you know, I didn't have a back, you know. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I, I lower the weight. And now, I mean, I think in my recent video, I did like 315 or like 14. And I feel that more than doing 495, you know. So as long as you're contracting the muscle and, you know, you have the intensity and you go to failure, you, you're going to grow. Yeah. 
how do you, you know, you, you seem to have done a really good job of deciding I'm a bodybuilder, my physique and the way it looks and the development of it is hundred percent. That's the priority. It doesn't matter if somebody next to me at the gym or some other pro on Instagram is barbell rowing or squatting more weight than me, because in the end, when we stand on stage, it doesn't matter. No, the judges aren't, they don't know how much weight you use. Was that, I see that as a huge problem in, in bodybuilding in general, that guys, their egos get in the way. How, how have you been able to get your ego out of the way and really focus just on what you need to do for your physique? Because I've been there, you know, I used to do stuff like that. And I think it's a phase eventually you grow out of and realize you don't need to do that. And I just think that's where I'm at. You know, when I see, when I see people around me that lift heavier, I think it's very impressive. Hmm. But I know if we were to stand on stage next to each other, it'd be a different outcome. Um, but again, you know, I just think it's a phase. We all go through it. And eventually you realize that heavy weight, you're only, you're just moving it. You're not contracting any muscle. And once you get that through your head, that's when the real progress starts. Yeah. Speaking of progress, you know, I think your physique is pretty, pretty close to complete right now. I don't really know what else you need. Of course, you and Matt, you're perfectionist. You're chasing perfection. What do you still want more of at this point or? body parts, aspects of body parts. What are you working hardest on at the moment? Uh, we're still working on my chest. Uh, you know, we still feel like that needs to be brought up a little bit. Hmm. Overall back development, we, we still want the back to be bigger, uh, more detailed and thicker. Um, and, and still, we want to bring up the quads a little bit more. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the hamstrings from the side. We don't, <laughs> see, we don't see too many of those anymore. It's, a, it's certain body parts that uh, you wish you saw more of like honestly when i'm at these shows and the, and the guys turn to the side three quarters of the guys are complete disappointment to me like where's your where are your hamstrings dude where are your effing hamstrings so, right. to, so to see somebody with that big drop in the hands you know thank god we need more of that work your hands <laughs> guys so i know we're we're very far away from what's the olympia 15 weeks away at this point 16 weeks uh 17 18 17 okay i'm, I'm getting ahead of schedule so you know, you, you've been vocal in the past. You set goals. You say where you want, how you want to do at a show or something. Do you have a goal in mind? Obviously, we want to, you want to win. But realistically, how, how high do you want to be at this Olympia? Assume, top you know, three to five. Top three, yeah. And I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's people are going to, some people will say, yeah, why not? And some people say, oh, he's being ridiculous. How dare he? But, you know, uh, if you look at the Mr. Olympia, I've been at the I've been at the Olympia when rookies took second. I was there when Dorian took second, when Flex Wheeler yeah. took second, when Kevin Lebaroni well, wasn't at that one. But I mean, it's not this it's not this waiting game that people seem to make it think like you got to pay your dues and this and that and do X amount of Olympias before they even look at you. If right. you look good enough, it doesn't matter if it's your first Olympia or your twentieth Olympia. They you know the head. Just oh, I agree. I like if you earn to be in the top three, you should be in the top three. And that's what I'm going for. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, you see, uh, already people are trying to do these imaginary matchups. I don't know. If oh. You probably see. <laughs> don't worry. We're going to talk about how stupid they are. You know, <laughs> Nick, Nick, Nick versus Hunter, Nick versus Ian, Nick versus Sergio. Yeah. In the end, it's going to be everybody versus everybody. So it doesn't, to try to like make these stupid little, who's going to beat who? In the end, it's going to be one man winning in that, you know, first, exactly. second, third, fourth. But uh, do, you, do you get a laugh out of that when people do all that? Oh, I do. I, I, I just don't understand why, you know, mm. like when I, they made one comparing me to Rami. It's like, that's cool. But like, why? You know, yeah. like it's, it's <laughs> he's, a champ. he's a champ. That's why. Oh, I, well, yeah. yeah. But I mean, you have some things already in your physique that he doesn't have. I'm not saying you're going to beat Rami. Don't. Right. You know, Rami fans don't come don't come kill me or anything but <laughs> you know I mean like the separation of the quads there's, yeah. there's certain things I've been wanting to see from Rami's physique that I don't know if he's ever going to get them you know he's got a lot of strong points obviously he's Mr. Olympia but nobody's sure. unbe nobody's unbeatable there's never been 100% perfect physique it's walk the earth everybody's yeah. everybody's got something so you know I, I'd like to see you next to him, whether or not, you know, it ends up being... My goal is to stand next to him at the Olympia. Yeah, why not? Why not? I think that would be a really cool comparison. I think so. Um, we got to talk a little bit about your popularity because 
you know, I, for a couple, for a few years, I thought American fans were kind of weak. We're just not that good as far as being bodybuilding fans. Cause I've seen for a good four, geez, it's been at least five years where the Middle Eastern fans, they're the best fans, the yeah. way they support Rami, the way they support Hadi Chupan, their guys. I'm like, you know, we, I feel bad for the American bodybuilders. Like, why don't we support our guys like that? And over the past year, year and a half, I've seen this fan base called Walker nation arise. And I, it's mostly young guys. It seems I want to say 16 to 24 would probably be described. Most of Walker nation. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. And they're, they're awesome fans. They follow you. Yeah. They support you. They encourage you and they they're believe awesome. in you. And I mean, it, it gives me hope that we're not these jaded, uh, spoiled brat fans in America that, that I thought we were. Uh, but talk to me, are you humbled by your popularity? Cause it's gotta be kind of weird to have so many people on your side and following you when, you know, a couple of years ago, I don't think you had anything like that. Oh yeah. It's always very humbling. You know, it's when, you know, when you hear people saying, Hey, you inspire me and you want to make me to do this. And I lost a hundred pounds, you know, cause you inspire like things like that, man. It just, it makes me realize like out, outside of bodybuilding, like that's, that's just cool on its own to be able to do something like that for people. And I, I'm just grateful for every person that stands by me and supports me the way they do. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're still 26, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> you don't want to be like that. Remember that Russian kid that was like 19 for about 10 years. What was it? Yeah. <laughs> he, he, he did not get older for a very long time. He was like 19 or 20 for, he was probably like 30 by the end of that span. But I mean, yep. it probably helps. You're going to be the young uh, yeah who's who's younger than you that's going to be an olympia nobody right no i believe i'll be the youngest yeah, yeah. and i mean uh, like i've said before i think your popularity has a lot to do with these with these younger kids for a while we were losing fans because i don't think the bodybuilding fan base the strongest base has always been the younger guys that's who used to buy magazines when people bought magazines yeah they buy the supplements and things like that they're the ones on instagram checking out everything but I think they were getting tired of seeing guys 35, 40, 45 dominating the sport. And there weren't that many young guys coming in. And over the past two, three, four years, we started to see a really good influx of young talent. And, you know, you'd yeah. be, you'd be the poster boy for that right now. Uh, I, do you agree that I think the fact that you are closer to the age of these, these fans makes you someone that they can sort of relate to better and they can sort of put yourself, put themselves in your position where they might not be able to do that with like a, 51 year old Dexter Jackson. Oh yeah. I, you know, I agree with that hundred percent, you know, and me being at the age that I am, you know, the, the message I always try to put out to the young kids is, you know, don't listen to any negativity because that's what I got my entire career. They told me I would never turn pro. You know, they told me Who I would told never you that? Pro. <laughs> I've heard it from every single angle. Wow. You know, I was told I'd never go to the Olympia. I was told, you know, now I'm being told I, I won't be a good Olympian, you know. So for me, it's just those young kids that listen to that negativity. If I can just instill in them, like, listen, if I can do it and ignore it and keep pushing, so can you. Yeah. And a lot of them, that you know, that's they, they listen. So from, you know, the messages I get, which is awesome. So if I can just keep that going, I, I think we can see a lot of young potential coming in the future. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think... I'd like to see this, and I don't know if you can be a part of this or not, but we've been losing a lot of good genetic talent to other divisions, to men's physique, to classic physique, uh, because especially men's physique is much more attainable. You can go from a regular gym rat to competing in men's physique pretty much instantly if you want to. Bodybuilding, yeah. open bodybuilding, 212 too, but you know, let's just call it bodybuilding. It takes, it takes longer. It takes more size. It takes For sure. just a lot more time and effort, and I think because we live in this fast, fast world where people want to get things right away. I, we've seen a huge drop off in, in participation in bodybuilding compared to these other divisions like classic and men's physique. Do you, do you hear from a lot more of these younger guys that they're interested in actually becoming open bodybuilders? Yeah. You know, like a lot of them want to obtain what I have obtained. And, you know, first and foremost, I have to explain them. I guess this doesn't happen overnight, you know, like you have to take your time. This is an overnight success, but a majority of the people, like they want to be open bodybuilders. Mm -hmm. They just don't think they have the potential to get to that level. So they settle 
for I don't want to say less because not, not, none of the other categories are less, but right. they settle for what they think they can obtain yeah. instead of, you know, eating more food, training a little hard, you know, doing things that need to be done in order to become an open body builder. Yeah. Um, but then, again, that's, that's where I want to instill. If that's your goal, push for it. Right. You know, don't listen to what people say, push for your goals and don't stop. Yeah. And you know, you're, I think we should say we're not saying it's less, but in terms of muscle mass, it is. Let's yeah, say that's, that's, yeah. let's say we got an average American male, five nine. I think is still the average height. Let's say he's one hundred fifty pounds and he wants to be men's physique guy. He probably only needs another ten or fifteen pounds, and he could do it. If he wants to be classic, he probably needs like another ten pounds beyond that. If he wants to be open, another fifteen he's, pounds beyond that. Yeah. You know, uh, even at the high amateur level, if you want to be at the NPC nationals. At five foot nine, you probably need to be a good, uh, you probably need to be like somewhere between like 215 and 225, that much muscle mass to get a look. But, you know, I, I hope that they are that inspired by you with they can be patient because that's it just, it's a waiting game. It takes time. It takes time to put on that kind of size. It does. It takes a lot. I mean, fortunately for me, like I had the genetics. I mean, you can see my, you just met my mom and that, like you can tell that the genetic factor was there for me. You know, so and not everyone has that, but it's very everything is very possible as long as you believe in it. And that's, you know, what I believe. Yeah, I was checking out your parents and I think it's from I think it's mainly from your dad. I was checking out the bone structure. Yeah. You know, I got a good well, eye. If you, if you look, I like my dad used to be a bodybuilder. So like I have my dad's upper body because yeah. if you really look, he, my man's got no calves. It, you uh, know, he's got no <laughs> versus my mom. She's got the calves. You know what I mean? That's funny because. I remember uh, the late Paul DeMeo told me one time he never noticed his mother's legs. I don't know why he never noticed them, but he goes, one day my mom was doing dishes and she had uh, shorts on or something. He said she had the biggest calves. I'm like, why didn't I ever notice that before? But that's, that's obviously yeah. from, that's come from somewhere. Um, let's talk. Uh, so you left Jersey last year and you've been in Florida and you just became a homeowner. You, got, you bought your first home. Congratulations. I did. Thank you. Thank you. So that's got to be an, that's a, that's a huge life-changing experience for anybody. What's it been like for you so far? Oh, it's crazy. I like from where my life was literally from last September to now less than a year, like it, my life has changed drastically, man. And it's, it's awesome. And like still none of this has really like sunken in that this is my life now. Like it's, this is real, mm. um, you know, but I'm just really happy and thankful for all the opportunities I've been given this far. Yeah. Cause I mean, that's, you know, now you got the, you got your lawn, you got to take care of, you got the, yep. you got to pay your utility bills and all that. I mean, must, <laughs> cause I remember I was, I was like a year older than you when I got my first house and I'm like, Oh my God, I'm like, I must be a grown up now. I got my own house. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> now, now, now you're a grown up. Yeah. I mean, you can't deny it now. You're, you're not, a, you're definitely not a kid. Uh, so you also got an awesome new dog, Maximus. First of yep. all, did you name that dog after the lead character in the movie Gladiator? Yes, I did. That's yes. my favorite. Yes, I did. <laughs> yeah. Is he a, what we call a, this is what we call on our homeowner's insurance, a quote unquote boxer mix? No, he's an extra large uh, bully. Oh, okay. Oh, well, this is so in Florida. You can do anything in Florida. <laughs> he's going to be really, really big. Wow. So how old is he? Luckily, now? he gets he gets along very well with my little Frenchie, so that's good. That's right. I forgot you have a Frenchie too. I got two dogs. Man, the Frenchie full grown is about like the size of a loaf of bread, <laughs> a fat <laughs> loaf of bread. <laughs> like those, are they? I don't. Tell me this: Are those dogs like actually obese, or that's just how they look? That's just how they look, man. Uh, they all look like. like if they drink too much water, they can, they look like this one. <laughs> Like, it's pretty like, funny like little roly-poly things so how, how big do you think that uh the maximus is going to get oh he'll definitely be well over 100 pounds nice nice so yeah tell me like you know you're in you you've, you're basically your whole lifestyle has changed i mean you were you were living with at home i assume in new jersey that so, was yeah so I mean, tell me how the environment and the setup the gym are you in is this much more ideal situation and environment that you're in now than you were a year ago uh, me being a Jersey, yeah, yeah, well, absolutely. This is a um, a much better positive environment for me. Um, the people I've surrounded myself with, like Matt, uh, Dom, anyone that's involved with Revive and Raw, like those people are just very inspiring and motivating to be around. 
And to be around people that work extremely hard the way they do, it just makes you want to work even harder. Mm-hmm. You know, so to have that around you, you're, you're constantly wanting to be better just like they are. You know, I want to be good, the best bodybuilder I can be. But beside that, you know, I want to be like them to where I want to be like the best, you know, entrepreneur, best businessman I can be outside of bodybuilding as well. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to, you know, get to both the best worlds here and be the best. Because I know you, you, you're not going to compete forever, you know. Yeah. So I'm just trying to set myself up the best way possible for when the wheels do fall off. I'm already good to go. Yeah. And that, that's very rare that someone who's really just starting their career would have that long range vision to even be thinking about. It's like a lot of people don't start a retirement fund until they're like in their late 30s, early 40s. And by then it's like, we should have been saving a, a little long. risk. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you talked about this support system around you and everything. You have the fans, you have Matt, you have Raw. You know, do you do you feel like you're not really doing this just for yourself anymore? That you know you want to you want to do well for them as well. Well, for sure. You know, when you have that support, you know, I don't want to say it's added pressure, but it just it makes you want to work even harder, knowing you have so many people backing you up. You know, and even my family. You know, up until this point, they have probably honestly given up everything possible to get me to this point. Wow. You know, so my one of my main goals is to be able to buy them a house in Florida. Like wow. that's, you know, my dad retires from his job in five years. Mm-hmm. Um, so obviously they can't leave yet. But yeah. that's, you know, it's fine. It leaves me plenty of time to save for them to get a house. But that's just, I want to be able to, help them the way they helped me so yeah you know i've, I've seen them at the shows and they, they they're so supportive i mean they wear the shirts they're yep. you can hear them screaming for you I, I know so many guys pros even that their parents never went to one of their shows they, oh, never, they never really supported their decision to be bodybuilders and they were never you know it, it's it's tough i mean they still love their parents and everything but they they all I, i've talked to these these men and women they's like i, I kind of wish they had been a little more behind me it's 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 kind of made, sure. them, made them sad and you you're in a great spot because your parents are your parents are awesome i love your parents <laughs> they have never missed a single show oh, wow that's, that's never awesome. missed one. so the uh, last thing i want to ask you it's really impressive i'm going to read it and i don't even know if it might just stand on its own you made a really cool post a couple days ago i'm going to read it if you want to be a champion you have to talk like you're a champion act like you're a champion work like you're a champion inspire and motivate like you're a champion you have to be willing to dig deeper than anyone else. You have to be willing to flip that switch and go to the darkest place you can imagine. And there was more, but uh, it's it, it's something that I think a lot of, there's so much insecurity and doubt in what we do in the sport of bodybuilding that sometimes people look at anyone who's displaying a, a higher level of confidence, they get intimidated by that and they, they see it as arrogance, but you know, I think you made a great point there. How can you be the best if you don't believe you're the best and that you you already have that potential in you? If you're filled with doubt, how could you ever reach the highest level that you're capable of? I mean, that's that's exactly, you know, what I was trying to get at. If your goal is to be number, not even a bodybuilding, just, you know, if your goal is to make it to the NFL, if your goal is to make it in the NBA or, you know, be a, a lawyer, if you go through your entire school career or your entire, you know, NBA or leading up to the NBA doubting yourself nine times out of 10, you're probably not going to make it when you have that confidence and you know what you're capable of and what you can do. I believe you can get to your goal that much quicker. Yeah. And I mean, it's probably the lack of that confidence. that stops most people from ever going after what they want to really do achieving what they want to achieve. So Listen up, guys. Go to Nick's Instagram, Nick Walker 39. Words of wisdom. Did I get it right? Nick Walker 39? I think, yeah. Nick underscore Walker 39, yeah. Someone else took Nick Walker 39, that bastard. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure we're going to be talking more as we get close to the Olympia. But I just want to really, I want to catch up and congratulate you again. It was, you know, uh, people were asking me, was it close between, and I hate to say that it wasn't because that sounds like I'm saying the other guys weren't good. The other guys were very good. It's just on that day, it was kind of Nick and it was everybody else. Yeah. But these guys, Justin looked phenomenal, but you just had something that, you know, when you came out, it was, it, to me, it was clear to everyone, everyone that was sitting there. And I've, I've 
rarely heard a, a crowd response for a bodybuilder. You know, it's been, I have over the years a few times, but it's been a long time since I heard a crowd just go crazy. Whenever you came out there, that place was just like, my ears are bleeding. Yeah. So that tells you something because the fans, judges do what they're going to do, but the fans always have their favorites. Sometimes it's not the judge's favorite, but this is one of those cool times when it ended up being one and the same. Judges had you the clear winner. You won with a perfect score. I don't know if you saw the score. I know. Crazy, man. <laughs> yeah. no, no second place votes from anybody. It was straight first. Yeah. Uh, in the crowd, nobody booed when you won. It was everybody left happy. You, the crowd, the judges, everybody. It was ideal. It was, <laughs> it was definitely a weekend that will be in my memory forever. That's for sure. Yeah. So congrats on that, Nick. And uh, and it's now it's your, you're on to the next one, the big one. And um, yeah, I don't think... Uh, Anybody should be putting any limitations on how well you can do with this show because you know, it's uh, it's wide open. It's We've had a different Mr. Olympia every year for like four or five years now anyway. So nobody's really like blowing away everybody else. Nope. We'll see what happens, man. It's going to be very, very interesting. I, know, we're, we're I think this Olympia is going to be a very, very exciting one. Oh, absolutely. Not just because I'm in it, but because I feel like everyone is going to be, they're coming at their best this year. Yeah. And like I said, new talent gets people excited. It'll be yep. your first Olympia. Hunter Labrada's first Olympia. Yep. Uh, I think Sergio will probably qualify. He'll be up there again. Ian. Ian Valier, hey. all the newer guys. Who else is it? Akim's coming back. Obviously, we've got yep. Rami, Brandon, uh, Roly, Bonak. Bonak, Hadi. If he gets, I'm sure he'll get back in the US. Hot, huh. Hadi. <laughs> so it's gonna be it's gonna be a stacked Olympia. And it's I think this is gonna be a real good one. Yeah, and it's in it's in Florida. You don't have to go all the way to Vegas for this one. Exactly. Drive a couple hours. I'm good to go. Yeah. So this is already shaping up to be a pretty epic. Yeah. Wait. All right. Well, thank you so much for taking the time, Nick. Appreciate it very much. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me, man. Yeah. Walker Nation, you guys rock. Keep keep showing the support and the love. Makes uh makes every, it lifts everybody up when you support a when you support a champion. And uh, that's it, everybody. Thanks for watching Ron Line Report with this man, Nick Walker. We'll see you next time.